Hi everybody, I am Dr. Jen Cabis, and we are here today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Angela McHughson. I'm the owner of Music Strong, and she's the owner of Tune and Tone Performance. Uh, we're going to try out a little crossover podcast here, and I've been doing a couple, but uh, we figured that since we're the only two who do what we do that we know of <laughs> for right now. Hit us um, up if you do this. Yeah, yeah, please do. Not the podcasting, like, the, the fitness the, the, training yeah, for musicians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We don't care if you podcast. Everybody podcasts. <laughs> we figured we'd just sit here and have a conversation and uh, yeah, talk about stuff that we think musicians probably need to hear that we tend to just talk about whenever we're talking anyway. <laughs> well, I just met her. Yes. She yes. said that so-and-so said to meet me and so-and-so said to meet me. So yep. she called and we had this conversation. I yes. said, like, hold the phone. We need, to do, we need to meet up in person. I'm actually yeah. going to be in Florida in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Let's meet up and continue this and let everybody else hear this yeah. because uh, our conversation, unfortunately, which is in the past and I no longer remember, was something that I thought everybody <laughs> needed to hear. So, right, right. I think we started out with, um, so what do we do? <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> which, you've been doing this for a while, still, even with as long as I've been injured and recovering and experimenting with that too, neither of us really has a solid, easy answer for that. No, no, I still don't ever like, well, you have to have your elevator pitch. You are correct, <laughs> and I still kind of don't have that simplified. Yeah, yeah. And I would, I, please send me your help, you know, what I do. I <laughs> need to help people. But, I mean, it's, you know, doing doing the, it's not just fitness training for musicians. No, no, because that would be something that I would say, if you're just looking for generic fitness training, you go to anybody who really knows what they're doing on any level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, this is highly specialized Still stuff. not your average boy or gym personal trainer. No. In my opinion, there are some good ones, there are some bad ones, but like this is much mm. more mm. much more specialized because we're looking at um, areas that are typically conducive to um, performance deficiencies, weaknesses, injuries mm -hmm. in performing artists, um, which is much more specialized and kind of have to live in that field as we know yes well like, I don't, okay so i'm still just kind of getting to know you so tell me your story and all the things about jen okay the injury story or the what we do story yes <laughs> those okay. in no particular order all right so we'll start out with, i guess with um how i got into this because that's always easier for me to talk about yeah um so i was actually a sophomore in high school when i started having problems um yeah me too. yeah <laughs> yeah and everybody around me is like how can you possibly be injured at this age? I'm going to keep looking over here, by the way. We have Ryan May assisting us with tech. Um, so I'm not just talking to somebody off camera who doesn't <laughs> exist. You know, like, he's actually here. <laughs> oh, <mom. laughs> um, oh, this is fun. So, yeah, everybody around me was like, well, how can you be hurt? You're too young to get hurt. And this is just like, what are you doing? Um, and it was the typical go see a doctor. Well, there's not mm -hmm. much we can do for you, but painkillers. Um, they tell you to rest? You should stop rest. playing. Yes, and it got worse, actually. That was like... Yeah. So, started sophomore in high school. I had to take a break from flying as a junior in college. So, we're talking like it took that long to develop. Mm. Yeah, it just progressively worse. Thumb pain here, up the elbow, up the neck. And what do you play? Like, clarinet. Yes. Clarinet. Clarinet. That's important. Clarinet, jazz saxophone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, the typical response people who are well-intentioned doing their best rest use a neck strap use your right arm as little as possible use your left arm to do everything by the way i can write with my left hand now didn't help that issue <laughs> it makes me so mad it just yeah. yes continue, continue. And, you know eventually you get to specialists because the doctors are like well the painkillers aren't working anti-inflammatories aren't working um let's send you to um you have a specialist or something? Yeah, it was a special, yeah, I think it was orthopedic a, surgeon. Yes. Surgeon? I was like, what's oh, oh. with an O? <laughs> orthopedic, <laughs> orthopedic, yeah. Orthopedic surgeon, um, who fortunately, fortunately, as terrible as he was, um, he was terrible? He was terrible in that he was like, well, if you're hurt, just, you know, stop playing. Huh? I'm like, well, then why don't you just stop being a doctor? Thank you. You know, like. <laughs> why is that the viable answer for only musicians? Right, right. Who, who else do you tell that to? You should just cut uh, your profession. I mean, he's apparently the same guy who said this to baseball players who were having issues too. What a it's like, moron! It took me not that long to figure out how to work with a baseball injury because everybody knows how to work with a baseball injury because it's well documented. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at the 
Yeah, anyway. Yeah. So, uh, fortunately, he didn't... He's baseball and algae oh, all the time. That's, that's all right. Yeah. Anyway, he, he, <laughs> so fortunately, he didn't want to cut me, um, which is stunning for a surgeon to not want to cut. Um, but basically, he was afraid because my problem was in my neck, cervical ribs. Um, oh, ribs yeah. Here. Talk about what cervical yeah. ribs are. Yeah, itty-bitty ribs right here. It's kind of gnarly. If you get in there and push, you can kind of feel them. Mm. Uh, not uncommon, <laughs> but most people don't do this all day for a living. <laughs> yeah, have you ever noticed your posture? I mean, did oh, you did yeah. you have lessons oh, was, where your mirrors and people, you know, yeah. like checking out? Like, did you notice you hunched a lot and they, now you don't? I knew what? that for a long time. It's much better now. It's still habitual. You know, your clarinet is right here, so you keep and saxophone too, this especially way. alto players. You know, not like tenor or fairy or whatever. I'm like predominantly alto. So, yeah, yeah. No, my posture was awful, mm. um, especially being introverted as a kid. It's like, so extra this way yes. yeah um so yeah no that that was like okay so you've got this problem and then you do this so of course you're putting pressure on blood vessels and tendons and nerves and like okay surgeon didn't want to cut because he said they're so small that they're like big enough to cause problems so small that if he went in and surgically tried to grind them down he's like more likely to do more damage than help so thankfully Enough. Um, yeah, so that, that was that whole process, and then the rehab was intensive. Um, it was my chiropractor figured out what the problem was. Not oh, yeah. Else, chiropractor so if I good chiropractors and not great chiropractors, yes. this was obviously one of the better chiropractors. Oh, yeah, and same with physical therapists. I've had phenomenal ones, oh, good. phenomenal ones, terrible ones. Um, but my chiropractor was the one who figured out what was wrong, um, and he, he was fantastic. Um, but it was, you know, three days a week, three hours a day, physical therapy, two days a week, chiropractic adjustment, one hour massage, one day a week, rolfing for like three months. Yeah. No By problem. the way, so, that's yeah. something that somebody on my Facebook page asked. How do we find practitioners like you, people who do what we do, mm -hmm. and people who do our, like she's talking about. Yeah. The, we need to come back to that. But yes, we do. Um, yeah, because we got a couple resources for that, I think. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I, we, we only talked for an hour. I don't know. <laughs> um, let's find out you know <laughs> um, so yeah that was that whole process it, it helped I got back to the point of playing again but there was always that you know you got this much better and that much better and like this is performance standard and mm -hmm. this is where I used to be when I before I was hurt or whatever where I wanted to be yeah and it just kind of kept bumping that ceiling and coming back down um, so that just kind of, it was frustrating. Everybody's looking for the quick answer, right? Like, but, but I have this timeline in my head about I'm supposed to be doing this by this age and this in this many years. And mm -hmm. it didn't work <laughs> out that way. It didn't work out. I was like, you know what? There is, there is a fix, which I don't use that word anymore. There is a way to fix this and this, mm -hmm. that's it. And go back to what I would intend to do. And it doesn't. It just doesn't. And it's, even if there was, I don't think I would value it at this moment, at this point in my life. Right. I'd not value it at all. Um, so is that how you got into what you're doing now? That is exactly how I got into that. Yeah. Um, Similar out, stories. Oh, yeah. And started out with um, Ava Amsler, her dynamic integration Love class. Um, uh, she is the flute professor at FSU, uh, runs dynamic integration program, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. And you got your master's? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my master's yeah. under her. Yeah, she's wonderful. So Amazing. she got me into dynamic integration, introduction to things like Alexander Technique, Feldenkrais, um, and then actually this one over here got me started lifting. I, I um, pulled her to the dark side. You pulled me to the dark side. I was afraid. Welcome! And, and she was very afraid. Yeah. Um, um, but I trusted was, you as part of a lot of that, yeah, actually. Yeah. And so we... Uh, that's the value of a good coach right there. Yes. Well, yeah. and, and we went to... Uh, CrossFit, where I trusted the coach there, I trusted their programming, trusted the fact that they were very mobility center nice. and focused. And, yeah. and, and that was after you had gotten me to a point where I wasn't afraid to touch a bar. No. And that was even after I got injured and was still yeah. going back yeah. and baby stepping. So yeah. it worked out. Not a lot of me. Right. I've, I've generalized for a long time that musicians are afraid of barbells. Yeah. Yeah. They're afraid of free weights. They're afraid. Mm -hmm. I had somebody yeah. from uh, Austria. Mm -hmm. Contact me the other day. He's like, "Well, lifting weights hurt my accordion playing." <laughs> we we had a lot of back and forth until I understood yeah. exactly what he meant. <laughs> right. I'm like, yep, yep. "That's no, interesting." 
yeah. I can't think of it. But I, I finally was like, do you mean with your grip? Like if you work too much right. on your grip, are you going to lose your dexterity? Mm -hmm. But I couldn't use those words because there's a language barrier. Yeah. And I basically said no. Yeah. I mean, it's just as risky as if you drive a car right. or you, you're cutting yeah. stuff in the, yeah. you know, chopping the onions and stuff. It's just as risky. Yeah. Anything you do in your daily life is just as much risk, in my opinion, in general, yeah. as lifting weights in a way that isn't stupid. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> We've all done that. Same Injury here. number three <laughs> no, was lifting weights. No, I'm sorry. Number two was lifting weights in a way that was stupid. And you always know. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, usually before you start, and definitely when you're in the middle of it, you're like, oh, that was dumb. Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that pain trigger in, in the realization in your head that you should stop, that's... That's when you should stop. You should listen yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. But and it is yeah. so tempting to just keep going because, like, but I could do more. Like, yes, but not should you today. <laughs> exactly. You can do more, but will you be walking out of here? Right. Right. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. So that is my very long-winded story. Uh -huh. um, for the most part, you know, we got into that, um, and I started finding ways of blending that with what I was already doing through things like dynamic integration and Feldenkrais Chris Alexander Technique. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, they work hand in hand. There's no reason that they should be separated. Absolutely. Um, so from there, certified strength coach, certified personal trainer, still pursuing Alexander training. Awesome. Um, that's, that's where we're at. And here we are trying to get other people on board. <laughs> right? I want to do uh, Alexander training for a long time, and then I finally decided not to. And I got into body yeah. mapping, and I decided not to. I mean, yeah, there's just so many things. Tough. And you can pursue all these different certifications, mm -hmm. but I mm -hmm. ended up studying all the classes and yeah. taking a lot of different things. And I'm like, I can't right. get certified in everything. Right. But yeah. you can still take the knowledge exactly. and apply exactly. it. And that's what I actually, when I was doing the Alexander training, that's what I saw a lot of people doing. Cause it's never just, um, you know, students who are just there for Alexander. Mm -hmm. It's like... The program I went to is performing artists, um, not exclusively, but a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, you know, dancers who are incorporating concepts pre-certification. Yeah. Just concepts to how they approach dance technique. And yeah. one gal was, um, she was interesting. She's a horseback rider and a yoga instructor, and she does chair yoga for elderly women who want to get into horseback riding. Dude, that's a that's, niche. That's a niche. That is nichier than what you we know. do. <laughs> well, so you also have to have horses and a farm. So and old you know. people and, and old chairs. people that need the yoga to get that, that like okay. yoga. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. Wow, and that's it's, cool. She was great, and she took and she was like, you could see she would take the lessons from the Alexander yeah classes that we were just in, and she'd be and she brought her wooden horse model that you sit on like you're, oh that thing was awesome. Oh, I love it. And she's like, let me just lift your leg and put it back down a couple times. And I'm like, oh, brilliant. Can I have you do this a couple times a week for when, a month? When I'm in my <laughs> chair at rehearsal, can you Yeah, can you do adjust these? Me? Can I borrow this can to play my clarinet in, in rehearsal? Like, <laughs> yes. I think y'all just came up with a good, a, another good niche right there. I don't know any more business ideas. Somebody that just goes through while y'all are all playing and does chair yoga for you while you're in the middle of playing. <laughs> At the concert. We, right, right. Distracting crap out of the audience. Right. It's really awesome. <laughs> like, just, you know, fixing, fixing yeah. people. Yeah. Exactly. Seating them in the way just they should go. Move your elbow. Okay, good. There you go. And then your head. Right. And then, I, I, yeah, I know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> My head go for it. All you got to do is... And then, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So. That's hunching. Suddenly so, like, the tone changes. Wind is better. Oh, my goodness. So much better. You laugh. It's true. Oh, oh no. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm very aware. It does. It does. It does. It. Alexander's technique is amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm not a musician myself. Played the xylophone in middle school. That's it. So, but but you can hear it and see it. It's true. If I had a dollar for every time, I play flute. If I had a dollar for every time, I heard, oh, I played flute in middle school and high school. Right. I'm like, well, that's awesome. That means yeah. that you can identify. Yes. Sort of. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> but I get that, but like that sheepish, like, well, I used to play, but I wasn't very good. And like, I quit. And like. Okay, but did you like it? Did you have fun? Yes. That was the point. Right. right. Is if you did that, I am happy, and you are welcome back at any time. Right. <laughs> like, do you ever miss it? I, I've heard both. I've heard, yeah. and I've heard, yeah. 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 Well, it's all that. There's community bands everywhere. Community <laughs> bands everywhere. I'm actually yes. starting an interest group <laughs> in my church for flute players because there's so many of us. Nice. Not even kidding. I mean, so it's like, well, why not just see who else is hiding in the woodwork, and we just, we'll go to symphony concerts, and we'll play flute choir music, or we'll just yeah. hang out and nerd out about, you know, about the flute, because okay. we can't, because why not? 
<laughs> flute players are a dime a dozen. There's way too many of us. Sorry, right, clarinet players are ten cents. Wow. <laughs> when I say there's too no, many, no, I mean no, there's the other way around. Sorry, there's a lot. Clarinetists are a flute players are ten cents. That's that's an old thing from one of my teachers. Like just that many more flute players. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good to know. Thanks. That's a, that's a great pep sure. talk. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank it you. actually was funny, but in hindsight, I'm like, okay. Right? <laughs> so so that's my like story. The story, but. but What's yours? You're somewhat, it. somewhat similar. So, <clears throat> I am horrible at being succinct. This is my best Reader's Digest version <laughs> I could come up with. Anybody else remember Reader's Digest oh, books? Right. My right. grandmother. Okay. Books. okay, so I'm not just pulling this out and you're like, what does no. that mean? No, no. Reader's Digest was the best thing as a kid. Because mm -hmm. um, my grandma, that's all the books she had. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's what I read. That's right? Keep your... <laughs> Interesting stories of how you keep yourself entertained at grandparents' house. There's three readers <laughs> I just, and I always thought they were great little cute quips. And stuff. Anyway, long story. <laughs> it's high track. So, um, I started playing in sixth grade, and I was I was that kid that I knew. I mean, my mom had this flute, and it mm. was in it was in purple velvet, and I would take it down, mm. and I would just open it and stare. And I'd be like, <laughs> just touch the buttons. Mm. One day I'm gonna learn. I was obsessed. And then one day I'm going to learn. And the day came for sixth grade, and they're like, who wants me? Look, I brought it. I'm playing this one. And they're like, I was that kid. And they're like, oh, you're going to go in the flute room. I'm like, uh -huh. you're finally going to get me to make a sound? Made a sound, like, right off, and I was, like, hooked for life. Uh -huh. it's, <laughs> it's one of those times you knew exactly what you are supposed to be doing. Oh, yes. You couldn't, I mean, my parents never had to tell me to practice. I just wanted to play all the time. Mm -hmm. I'd play at lunch. I once missed the bus because I was in the band room practicing, and I missed the bus, and my mom was picked. She was like, you did what? Like, I was practicing. I'm sorry. I'm like a sixth grader. So I'm getting better, me too. mom. Right. <laughs> She's like, I was working, you know, but anyway. So, you know, I was that kid. All through high school, and then um, all these honor bands and stuff, because flute was life. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. I went to a, a private school where kids didn't understand band kids. I was the band my seventh grade year. I was the band kid. I'm not kidding. Like the, my eighth grade year, there were about ten of us. But seventh grade, I was the band. It was me and the band director. Second, second grade, second grade, second okay. period. <laughs> Long story. It doesn't matter. So I mean, it was like life, right? So yeah. I found my solace. Solace, solace. Respite. Right. Reprieve. You know, <laughs> I don't know all the words. What you mean? <laughs> That was my area, right? Mm -hmm. So I got into interlock and arts camp. Okay. And uh, for anybody who knows, it's an intensive. I think when I went, it was an eight-week camp. I think now it's a six-week camp. I can't remember. I'm, it it I don't draws know. all sorts of people for a reason. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah, so and we're all like this obsessive bunch. But oh, that's yeah. a whole nother level of obsessive. Oh, goodness, it was yes. one of the best experiences of my whole life. Mm -hmm. But I was not physically prepared in any way. Right? Right. I went from playing, what, an hour or two a day yeah. to playing eight hours every single day for eight weeks. And my, <laughs> yeah, you get it, right? And that was between my 10th grade, 11th grade year, 11th to 12th, I forget. Yeah. Um, I ended up with tendonitis, and by the end, I had a pencil, like I couldn't hold a pencil like this. Yep. Agony. Yep. I could not even hold anything. So mm -hmm. doctor said, well, we'll give you a cortisone shot if it doesn't calm down. Right. I did physical therapy, and he said, ah, you should probably quit playing for a while. I'm like, I got auditions. Yeah. Didn't get it. Because, well, yes. go to physical therapy, see how it works out. I'm like, well, we're just going to ignore that part. We'll do the physical therapy. Right. Move on. Right. So that was high school. Then I get to, I picked up lifting mm -hmm. as, at an early age. Right. So I've been doing that for a while. And I, I started in college, and then I got to graduate school. Mm -hmm. And it was just, that's what I did. I, that was my thing. Every morning I'd wake up, walk to the fitness center, do my thing. Mm -hmm. Whatever, and all I was doing was what was in the magazines because I wanted mm -hmm. to look like the people in the magazines. Yeah, reading all the muscle and fitness horrors and mm -hmm. being like, I'm gonna look like a fitness model. <laughs> and I, I did some good work. I made a lot of progress, but I also had no idea what I was doing. They don't. They never mentioned form back in those days. Right. They only did tons of volume, mm -hmm. and they didn't take into account the fact that I'd been doing this mm -hmm. for 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Never this. Mm -hmm. That feels weird right now. Like this is all tight and weird. Yeah. You know. I mean. So you don't. You've got this asymmetrical imbalance that you don't even know about. Mm -hmm. You have an imbalance between here and here. Yeah. And one day, I, it was chest day. It was not Monday, by the way. International chest day. Might have been Tuesday. I was but gonna I, say, depending on the gym, there's three days a week for chest day. Right. So. <laughs> <Touché. laughs> so it was chest day, and I'm I'm I've just gone back to do a incline dumbbell press. I didn't know about setting the spine and doing all that stuff. And I just went, you know, it's a loosey-goosey spine. I just, 
and this muscle uh, rhomboid actually mm -hmm. tore mm -hmm. in grad school for performance. So, you know, after about an hour of lying on the floor not being able to move, right. <laughs> uh, I finally was able to, I, it was scary. I, yeah. I was in my oh, yeah. office and I yeah. thought maybe lying on the floor will help. Oh, I couldn't move. I drug myself to health services. They mm -hmm. told me it was up. They gave me muscle relaxers, wrote me a prescription for massage and told me to quit playing. Um, Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I should just quit grad school? Stop, is that what stop doing the you thing know, you're, you're in school for. You're in school for. And just quit. Just stop. Don't try to figure it out. It's okay. All right. Yeah. That's no. Awesome. No physical therapy. No yeah. nothing. Just have massage. Yeah. And uh, have some muscle relaxers. Dude, Which I mean, at all address oh, the hair. Like, no. <laughs> on any level. Not no, at complete, all. It's complete opposite of what you were at that point. <laughs> yeah. Hello. It's a miracle I recovered at all. That's yeah. thrown me off, even with my background, is seeing the amount of muscle relaxers that are thrown out to. Oh, my, my background started in martial arts. Yeah. And just seeing that, it's like that. That how you tear things <laughs> is, well, is not being tense not properly using mobility and torque mm -hmm. look yeah. you know form how about teach form yeah mm -hmm. i had no idea so well, and if you're doing nothing hopefully not cutting you off <laughs> yeah, just pay attention if you're doing nothing but reading um you know this is how it's it's all about the movement how it should look mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like okay but this is being written by a lot of times bodybuilders mm -hmm. who if you don't know about bodybuilding it's a sport it, it's a sport it's a sport it's a full time deal they have to train for years which i didn't know you know before mm -hmm. i started doing it i had no clue the mind muscle connection in the same way that we have to train an embouchure yeah, and yeah. finger patterning and like so if you can't feel what they're trying to target in the movement the movement does you no good yeah exactly <laughs> I know, right? So, um, yeah. yeah, so then I fast forward, graduated from Florida State um, with my master's, was, had uh, no idea what to do with my life, so started getting really into fitness because I wanted to take a break from music as much as I loved it. Got a couple of orchestra jobs, which is why I'm down here. But other than that, I was like, well, let me just check out this fitness thing. Maybe I want to yeah. be a trainer. Yeah. But there was an uh, audition I wanted to take for the President's Own, the Marine Man. Yeah. It was on Piccolo, which Piccolo is my dearest love, but I didn't know any of the orchestral repertoire at all. And I had a few weeks, so I booked my plane ticket, and I'm like, I'm going to learn this. Uh, I don't know if you know, but my third injury, the piccolo <laughs> injury, that's a thing. My, I actually saw my doctor down here a few uh, days ago for thyroid stuff, whatever. Mm -hmm. It also doesn't work. Um, <laughs> but he laughed. He made Been a joke there. about playing piccolo or whatever, and I was like, that's actually the third injury I ever got. And he stopped. He was like, what? I was like, that's what I do for a living. He had no idea, and then he was like, kind of shut up. He was going to make jokes, and then he went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a funny moment. <laughs> it was great. So the third injury was a piccolo injury. I went from zero hours a day to two to four hours a day on this tiny instrument. It's not about the weight of the instrument. It's right. about the position, right? right? So you're here, right. and you get into things, yeah. and you're doing this again, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't put my arm down. It got yeah. stuck. Yeah. And I started getting these really intense uh, muscle spasms. And it all had to do with this muscle right here. Yeah. Uh, so this is what changed me forever. That I went to see a doctor. I had the audition in like a week, and I was desperate, and I couldn't play. Everything hurt. I, I couldn't sleep. I yeah. couldn't play. Oh, yeah. I was freaking out, right? right? So the doctor said, <clears throat> so what's going on is you have uh, a muscle imbalance, which was my first clue, between here and here. Mm -hmm. And or there's a big knot in your pectoral muscle. Mm -hmm. um, ordinarily, because it's so severe uh, and it's causing so much problems, I would give you a cortisone shot right in the middle of it to calm it down. The problem is it's right over your heart and it might kill you, and that's probably not what you want, so <laughs> you should probably just stop playing. And I went, plan B is? <laughs> mm -hmm. I have an audition next week. He goes, right. well, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, well, come up with something, because right. it's not yeah. an option. He goes, right. well, here's a cream, and then you might want to reconsider. I'm like, maybe you should reconsider your job. Right. I'm going to reconsider my job. Right. And I went, all right, that's enough. <laughs> done with hearing this answer, right? Take yeah, a cream. Right. <laughs> and I did rest, but then I was like, look, I'm going to learn everything mm -hmm. I can on this subject. Mm -hmm. So then I got yeah. my, um, I find out that the National Academy of Sports Medicine mm -hmm. has this, uh, the, the way that they assess people before, as a personal trainer, mm -hmm. they do this whole movement assessment. Mm -hmm. And they talk about these muscle imbalances, and all yep. of a sudden I was like, oh, yep. click, <laughs> right? So ironically, now I've had four. 
these fingers are all are slightly numb. Um, thoracic outlet injury yeah. uh, syndrome. Have you heard of this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't cram on an alto flute. It's, such a, it's a terrible idea for, for instrumentalists. In general. It is. And the ironic thing is I gave my very first presentation on like strength training for musicians or flutists or something real vague. I don't know. And this lady comes up to me and she goes, well, do you travel to give workshops? I said, no, but I could. <laughs> right? <laughs> and she starts, yeah. <laughs> she starts telling me about, um, that, well, my fingers are numb and this is this. And so the ironic thing is like 10, 11 years ago when this whole started, thing started, that's what she's dealing with, and now I'm yeah. dealing with it. So the gift in it is now I can really relate to people who will yes. have this problem exactly. because it was instrument induced. Mm -hmm. I understand. I have way better of understanding. Now I really don't want to have to experience every injury there is to understand. Right. <laughs> but in a certain point, yeah. you've experienced enough that you're like, you know what? I understand how this works. I can see oftentimes what mm -hmm. the cause is without having to experience it yeah. versus Bless their hearts, lots of good people out there mm -hmm. who are doing good work. If they haven't experienced an injury themselves, yeah. it is very, very difficult to relate to yeah. the client. Or else, in some cases, I find diagnosing or approaching a reasonable treatment given the limitations. Mm -hmm. I see that problem a lot with a lot of people who haven't been through it. Like, yeah. Okay, but here is what this feels like, <laughs> you know, emotionally yeah. too. So asking them to go from like, but well, you're actually okay, so just do this. They don't feel okay. No. So that's not. And then you have fear built up. Like when I go back to this, am I going to just re-injure myself? Because there's not yeah. the education no. around what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's not a happy, mm -hmm. it's a very scary situation. It is. Especially if you get to that point, you're like, well, is my career over? You know, and I've seen a lot of people less stubborn than me <laughs> completely shift fields. And I do believe that in the long run, it's what they were meant to do to wherever they shift to. Um, it's never a negative thing in the long term yeah. for them. But I've seen the injury and fear be the cause of that shift right. rather than being drawn to what they need to do, mm -hmm. um, which is always just like. The worst feeling in the world for me to see that and know what it is and not be able to do anything about it. Like, okay, quit, but quit for the right reasons, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't, please don't quit because some doctor said you should just quit playing. Please don't mess that you, that be your, mm -hmm. no. Quit for the right reasons. <laughs> yeah, so, so, um, like I said, there was somebody on my Facebook page who said, how do we find people who do yeah. what you do? Mm -hmm. Which, uh, that's not an easy question to answer. No, it's a very difficult question and it's, if we're talking traditional Western medicine practitioners, mm -hmm. that's a little easier. Yeah. Um, I think probably for the same reason you're thinking. Um, which would be PAMA. PAMA is great. PAMA Performing is great. Arts Medicine Association, for those who don't know. Mm -hmm. I think their website is artsmed.org, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, artsmed.org. Yeah, they have an entire list by region. Sort by specialists. They do. People who specialize in working with performing artists, so you don't get that, hopefully don't get that answer of just right. do something else like <laughs> thanks <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah um, but outside of that I mean there's not a database that I know of no for anybody who's not an, like we're not MDs no but how do you find somebody who's specialized in right what we do right and especially for you and I are of the experiential <laughs> <laughs> and not yeah. just us but the people we work with too like they need to be together you can't yeah. just do one or the other, um, or you're missing out on your full potential, if nothing else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I am not aware of a database. Um, and it's also com further complicated by where are you as an individual in your needs, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. your mentality. Yeah, that, that goes a long way. I will say mm -hmm. that there are some things that you can look for in absolutely. a practitioner. Yes. Or a trainer, yes. or a um, am I missing another adjective here? Pronoun, but in, in somebody that you're yeah. looking for to help you. Correct. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as a as a trainer, I'm I'm slightly biased towards my own. There there are there are several good certification agencies. Mm -hmm. NASM is the one that I like most, just because they have 
they even just as trainers, they have a corrective exercise specialization, which I think goes really. I mean, it's just it's brilliant. And I'm about to da I'm about to uh, purchase the updated version. They just did this huge update on it. So they have tons more information. Um, so I'm about to purchase that just so I can stay updated. Yeah. Um, but I like that they give assessments, and there are, there are other ones that are yes. that, that give assessments. So any yeah. trainer yeah. needs to be able to give you a, a some kind of a movement right. assessment and assess muscle and balance. FMS right. is another one I know. Um, Y'all know of some others? Um, those are the two that come to my brain first. These, these are definitely harder to find, but if you are not within striking distance of somebody that is a performing artist and also doing certified appropriately yeah. and she's in Tallahassee and I'm in Nashville yes. by the way yeah, yeah. And if you're within <laughs> striking distance of Tallahassee we'll probably find a way to make it work yeah um, and I know I'm looking into eventually remote work to yeah. a degree um, now I already do remote work yeah so, so I, that's I have an several clients who they, they live everywhere so we yeah. do a Skype session I will give them a movement assessment mm -hmm. Um, and anytime I have one client who actually drives through on occasion and yeah. we work out at the gym and yeah. I can really show yeah. him the best, you know, guide him through the workout. This right. is the form you need and it's, right. it, it's much better that way. Yes. And it's, it's but it's better than nothing if you're going to go online. Oh, absolutely. It's the same with um, music lessons. Like, yeah. yeah, I can teach a clarinet lesson through Skype, through Skype. pretty decently. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be better if I can get you right in front of me, totally see true. from all sorts of angles. Um, and then you can see me better too. So true story. Now you've had Alexander technique, yes, right? And I have um, too. Well, it's been a little while for me. Yeah, and there are there are Alexander technique practitioners who specialize in performing artists. I personally feel like that takes. Uh, how do I want to describe this? Because it's not meant to be negative at right. all. Um, I'm laughing at the at the guy with yeah, yeah. this pickup okay, truck just that's circling. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Florida, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, How you doing, guys? All right. Yeah, but a lot of Alexander technique training either takes a somebody who's good at introducing you to it mm -hmm. and the mindset that goes along with it, or else somebody who is already very calm and attuned to their body. Um, it's not to say that you can't get into it. Sure, but um, I know that for there's a couple different Alexander agencies, um, mm -hmm. Alexander Technique International (ATI). Um, they, I believe, and Feldenkrais practitioners, Feldenkrais.com, they both have um, websites where you can search for an instructor based on specialty, and I do believe that they have performing artists for their filters, too. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not as interested in that, if you're looking for something more like what we do, but you want right. somebody hands-on and closer, if I had to take a stab in the dark, um, not even a stab in the dark, but mm -hmm. I'm, there's there's words I'm missing to describe this. What um, is it? Strong fit practitioners, oh, I yeah. would guess, would be the, one of the better ones if you're not going to work with a performing artist specifically. Um, and I say that because the principles required to be a strong fit coach mm -hmm. are very much in with what I would want somebody who's not working with right. one of us to have. Right. Um, it's assessment based first. Yeah. Um, movement and feeling based. Um, I'm going to use the word tension based. Mm -hmm. um, in term, but that means not like, oh, I'm tense all the time. But like, yeah, I can create movement using specific targeted muscles. Right. Versus going into a different muscle that is stronger but is leading to pain. Right. Um, so strongfit.com, that's uh, that's their website. I believe they have a list of coaches on there. It's been a while since I've checked. Yeah. But it's actually one here in Lynn Haven. Yes, there is. Uh -huh. um, there you yeah. go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So there, that would be, if you're not going to work with foreign artists and organization, I would check out. I have one in Tallahassee um, also. Yeah. Well, great. it's not fully certified yet. Not certified. Does. That's right. Yeah. The Strongfit certified coaches versus the Strongfit trainees are very <laughs> certified coaches. Trainees. Mm. That's yeah. not to say that yeah. these are necessarily they have a, they have set a better very these, rigorous training and extended training program good. until they know you're ready. That's yes. good. Um, so fully certified coaches are much harder to find. And and the reality with strong mm -hmm. is that it's it's about fixing dysfunction mm -hmm. anywhere from physical and even some neurological and mental dysfunctions that yeah. come from the movement mm -hmm. uh, issues and, and the patterns that we've developed. Some of it modern, some of it from injuries, you know, sitting right. in a chair all day, driving all day, <laughs> okay. injuries oh, yeah. where you 
you know, half of my body is stronger because of an ankle injury where I'm walking on right. one side right. for a year and a half, two years. And, you yeah. know, so those kinds of things are fun to find out. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Neurokinetic therapy is another one that's right along that the same path. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, we talked yeah, about yeah. this. We talked about this one. Yeah. Um, that was actually very interesting. It is <laughs> so cool. And it has to do with mapping the, the body, the, the neurological dif- dysfunction in you know, using manual muscle testing. So finding. Do you want to unpack that, like how it fun- how it works, not like in depth, but so that. Oh, that's good because I'm yeah. I'm just studying for level one. <laughs> so <laughs> no it was pressure. Like, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> so it was a two day workshop that I did, and we covered every muscle, basically every big muscle in the body. Well, no, we did like the fingers and toes and stuff, but level two and level three has to do with rotation, scars, yeah. eyes, visceral stuff. Mm-hmm. So we did most of the muscles, yeah. and it's it's amazing. So basically. You can, you can find uh, massage therapists, physical trainers, uh, physical therapists, athletic trainers, chiropractors, and some even yoga instructors that have taken these courses, nktneurokineticktherapy.com to find a practitioner. Um, there's three levels. And um, yeah, so what you do is you, you use manual muscle testing to find out what the relationship is between a muscle that's testing strong and weak mm-hmm. and which is inhibiting the other or which is facilitate which is inhibited and which is facilitated yeah. right and sometimes they they present one way and then you test them it turns out it's actually yeah. flipped yeah. and then you use whatever modality you know to release which is not correct but relax yeah. the facilitated muscle and then activate the inhibited muscle mm-hmm. and then bringing that usually um, a lot of times, it like the the pain level that you're experiencing is gone pretty quick. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And that story that you told me when we were on the phone about where um, one client who had the grip problem. <laughs> what about the thumbs? Yes. yes oh, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, she's a, she's an audio tech. Um, she she does tons of audio stuff, but she also types all day long. So when she's not doing that, hauling monitors and doing audio visual stuff, she's typing. She also has had rheumatoid arthritis, so her fingers are pretty gnarly, literally. And then she has scoliosis, so she's all kinds oh, of fun. Yeah. So she came to me because she's like, I want to be strong. I don't want to get injured doing more of what I do, and I, I want to make sure I'm balanced, right? So she was. We we're we were starting our session. She goes, you know, my thumb kind of feels funny. It hurts lately. And I'm like, well, you know, what? let me test. So I started testing her thumb, mm-hmm. and then I'm trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? Let me see if there's a connection with her neck. Mm-hmm. And so. I found out that actually some of her neck muscles were causing her thumb yeah. to have mm-hmm. problems. So I started to like release the neck muscles, and she started doing this. And we weren't even talking about her thumb. I'm like, why are you wiggling your thumb? Uh-huh. Uh huh. It doesn't uh-huh. hurt anymore. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> it was the coolest thing. I was like, yeah. that was one of those moments. Where yeah. I was like, oh, it works. No, what I'm doing was that's, great. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Anytime you get those moments with a client, like, what's your? Have, have you had a favorite moment with a client like that? Oh. I mean, I've had a number of really good ones. The most, the freshest one. Do you mind? Sure. The freshest one was with <laughs> this one yesterday. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. um, we were working on um, hinge motion. Yes. Oh. Um, yeah. So if you don't know what that is, you're standing and you hinge over and you stand up. Move from here. Yeah. There you go. Um, Fingers in the crease. But <laughs> we're trying to get it to come from. Um, Underbutt. <laughs> Those glutes. <laughs> like, it, we're looking for the connection the between booty. the um, <laughs> the underside of the glutes and the hamstrings, and getting those together to take the, the pressure off. Issue of tuberal ligaments. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's really sarcastic. <laughs> oh, I can't go nice places. It's going to take you anywhere. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But yes, the glute, glute ham yes. tie-in. Yes, how about that? Yes, <laughs> trying to keep it simple, and maybe I'm making it more complicated. Anyway, um, because of our relationship, I was able to do this. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, would not do this with a different client. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a couple people um, in the gym that are like, uh, "Excuse me, not <laughs> <Is that> okay." <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so you bent over with a barbell at uh, the end of it. We're in a landmine position. Um, if you don't know what this is, go look up my hinge video, the landmine position. Got that up there for you. And I'm seeing what's going on, and we've tried verbally a couple times, um, and it was better. Yeah. Um, but, again, because of our relationship, I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to get hands on, okay? <laughs> 
So I'm standing behind, like, shoving my fingers into this connection, which looks wildly inappropriate, which is why we got the response. <laughs> it's a small gym. They all knew what we were doing. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Um, but it was the difference between like the flicker, 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 trying to turn on and then just on. And then like, hey, there it is. Yeah. And I was like, that's, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. It's, it, and that's where the whole hands-on thing that y'all keep bringing up comes yeah. in so yeah. heavily here. You know, you can look at Men's Health Magazine all day. Yeah. Like, you can watch the videos. Yeah. But we move completely different, all based on our patterns. Yeah, yeah. every single one of us. And yeah. our own perceptions of how we move, too. Mm -hmm. You know, you take a video of how you move and then go watch it, and you'll look at it and go, I had no idea I was doing that. And that's why really getting hands-on with an, ex you know, an expert yeah, or yeah. somebody yeah. that's at least trying yeah. and has yeah. good qualifications you know, yeah. <laughs> is going to do more than, than just watching the videos and, 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 and trying to emulate. Because I... Yeah. The whole reason we did that, I'd spent a bunch of time fixing my hinge, if you will, mm -hmm. so that the heavier lifting doesn't hurt things. Right. But I was obfuscating it. I was using different muscles mm -hmm. to mirror the proper movement. Yeah. And I was using the completely wrong ones, and that was uh, actually hurting my back. Yeah, absolutely. And so... And I usually try to let him try on his own and not be like, what about this? What about... You know, right, right, yep. right. We don't need that in our relationship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, think about it. No two uh, clarinet players, no two mm -hmm. bassoon players, no two percussionists, no two flute players, no two guitar players play the same way. No. Just oh, because no. you share the same instrument does not mean that your body yeah, is going to be behave the same as somebody else. So that's why some people develop injuries and some people don't. Right. Based on their anatomy, based on their movement, based on their schooling, based on their everything. Everything's different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. like, I'm writing these books. <laughs> um, I, I wrote the first one this year. It's called The Essential exercises for musicians, which is like just the basic, like we're teaching about, this is your core, this is like the literal core, this is how you brace, this is why you need yeah. to. These are some activation things to take away some pain in your shoulders, because we think this whole area is yep. the shoulder, right? Yep. yep. And you know, yep. stuff like that. <laughs> but I, you know, I'm, I'm doing the research and I'm like, my gosh, how do I, <sighs> there's, I, I wrote, I started to write an outline today. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason I was late getting down here is I was trying to like, I need to sit down and do this. Yeah. And then trying to divide it into all the different instruments. Mm -hmm. There is so much. It, yeah. So much. Yeah. But yeah. There's that, a reason for my treatise that it was like, yes, just clarinets. And what was your, <laughs> what was your treatise on? Uh, my treatise was the cross application of um, Feldenkrais, Alexander Technique, body mapping, and it was intended to be dynamic integration, but we couldn't make it work, eh. to daily clarinet practice. So not just the practices uh, of those things, but bring it into the practice room with you. Because that's right. where I struggled was, okay, I feel great doing this work, but the second I'm back at the clarinet, I'm messed up. Again. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, in mm -hmm. order to graduate, pro tip, if you're going after your doctorate, <laughs> Parameters are your friend. Don't yes. leave anything open ended. <laughs> Keep it small. <laughs> yeah, and fortunately, small. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it was it was still. No treatise is small. <laughs> it's never small. But fortunately, I had Debbie Bish looking over me. Yeah, um, going. We're gonna set a finite amount of material. <laughs> yeah. yeah. By the time but, you hit page five hundred, so, yeah. But which is interesting. It was not five hundred. <laughs> isn't there? Oh, there's just not a lot of studies done. On musicians and strength training, musicians and injury. There's more on injuries. There's but a, quite not, a few on injury statistics. Yeah, but not so much on directly how strength training benefits. So the ones that run out yeah. are really positive. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, there's been all sorts of other things that I think are more attractive to the average musician. Yeah. Like yoga is more attractive to us because mentally, emotionally, we identify with that mindset more quickly. Mm -hmm. And there are no general, foreign objects. Big generals. There are no foreign <laughs> objects. There's nothing that you've been told this is going to hurt you. Right. Um, so, shoot, there was a point in starting that conversation. Shoot. <laughs> uh, we're talking about your treatise. Dang it. We we're talking about uh -oh. why we're more attracted to things like yoga and Belgian craze because of our mindset. Where did we come from? Where did we go? I don't know. We were having Where a great conversation. Oh, dang, dang, dang it. Joke. Dang it, dang it, dang it. There's a point in that. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. But the strength part of it. So yeah, there's, there's oh, you're the studies, about stats and stuff. Yeah, yeah there's studies on statistics of injured musicians. There are studies on. Um, there's been a couple on yoga for musicians. There's been um, a couple on the benefits of different practices for musicians. But nothing to cross apply it into the practice room. Mm -hmm. And the stuff on. We just lost our thing. No. Oh. 
We talked too long? <laughs> we might have talked too long. I think those long. two are still going, I hope. Okay. Um, still going. Okay. 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 So there we go. Um, <laughs> that's only been 45 minutes. That one's gone. <laughs> but we... Uh, train, that's train of thought. Statistics, not one of the, weightlifting... Dang it. Um, um, we were talking about there's not a whole lot. Yeah, there's a lot of stats, yeah, but not a whole yeah. lot on strength training. No, that, that one is much more limited. You're much more likely to find something on a new method developed to address technique and position at a specific instrument. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm specifically thinking of Lister Sync, which is amazing for what it does for pianists, but you have to take it's like two or three years of Lister Sync yeah. before you can really get back to performing. See, and not the timing is bad. But yeah. Who can do that? Some people do. And that's wonderful if you can get that opportunity. Right. And especially if it's addressing a healthier technique at your instrument. Yeah. Fantastic. But is there a chance that there is something else going on in your body right. contributing that you don't know about? Right. Um, so much in the same way that your neurokinetic therapy. neurokinetic therapy is testing for that relationship. When we're doing assessments on clients, it's, okay, we're going for the... Whereas physical therapists will go for small muscle groups. Mm. Um, we're going for the big structure. They're muscles. going for localized. Yes. We're going for global. Yes. And we want things to, we want there to be something big and strong. Right. And well, the healthy. body doesn't work in isolation. No. We want there to be something to attach, to attach to. If so, your shoulder yeah. hurts, look right. at the whole chain. But, but if that, this that's... arm hurts, if this right. tendon hurts, okay, well, where's my bicep? Well, I don't have that. So where's my teres and where's my lats? And I don't yeah, yeah. have those either. But you know what? I didn't have this. Yeah. And everything attaches here to your core. Or your, so your TDA. Why don't we one. start to the psoas? Why don't we start with the psoas and the obliques? Can you get those? If yeah. you can't get those, there's nothing for anything to attach to. Yeah. Which what is you, not to say that the, for the, people who don't know, what do you mean by you can't get those? Um, I don't have a bicep. What? <laughs> <laughs> My no, first thought was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. I, so, I know obviously, I, don't have, I muscles, have a but bicep, <laughs> but the ability to use a muscle is what I'm talking about with that. Um, so of course. My hamstrings used to be terrible. Of course, they were still there. You know, it's not like you're gonna take <laughs> you an MRI them. and be like, "Oh my God, her They're hamstrings right just now. you know." On vacation, <laughs> but I could not flex them. I could not. I could get them to burn, kind of. If I did you have an anterior pelvic tilt? Um, oh, <laughs> maybe. It depended on what position I was in. I got oh. all sorts of funky pelvic tilts. Fun, but you know, if you can't feel, yeah, and you, then. Okay, if you can't feel, you can't use, you can't use, you can't develop structural strength, right. which is different than, you know, like, oh, I'm just going to get jacked and tan and move a bunch of weight strength. <laughs> jacked <laughs> and tan! Jacked and tan! <laughs> I mean, if you want to be swole, we can help, but... <laughs> we can do that, too. We can do that, too. It would be jacked and tan. Why don't we call this jacked and tan for musicians? Can we? <laughs> Gosh. Quick, Welcome to, to quick to hit the, the website uh, before it disappears. <laughs> Jacked and Tan for musicians.com. <laughs> for all your Jacked and Tan needs. Swole musicians. <laughs> swole no. musicians. Swole musicians. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, that, that might turn off a that. lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? So, the point of all that is that, yes, you can get those results. <laughs> That's a way to do it, but. It's not what we're looking for here. We're looking for the ability to create a strong enough basic structure that when you're sitting there focusing on this, you don't have to worry about, is my core strong enough to support? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you do use your... I just put this out there the other day. Like, how many musicians deal with sciatica? I've started to deal with that myself lately. Some, Although I think it's my obturator and turnus. It's not piriformis that's causing the problem. So, you're giggling at me because I'm using an anatomical term, aren't you? <laughs> I... <laughs> It's good to have those out there. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's... I'm really bad about dumbing everything down. <laughs> too far I, I, I got... Okay, when I first started in this, I got lambasted for not... For taking making it too dumb. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. you don't know my audience. They're like, well, right. where's yeah. your research study? Right. I'm like, yep. I'm not oh, a my researcher. Goodness. Oh, my goodness. You know, so it's, I feel like I can't win. So there it's are, in there, there, there are plenty no of fields that are like that. You can't yeah. win. You can't if win. You try to, if you try to high level it. You know, right? And, and or if you try tech, to, like, the tech industry is the same way. You're like, not using these terms. Huh. People assume that you're ignorant. When right. who's the audience you're speaking right. to? You're the trying number... to give them a greater understanding of this unfathomable thing. 
Yeah. So if I see her yeah. core, a yeah. lot of people just think it's your six pack abs, right? Right. 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 It's yeah. all about the abs. Yeah. But <laughs> but I mean that yeah. there there are all these different layers and yeah. how they correspond to your shoulder or your glutes and how that works in cross you know an okay. asymmetrical stuff yeah. with how you play an instrument yeah there's a certain level of dumbing down that doesn't need to happen right but i've been <laughs> lambasted both because right. some somebody's in the higher up flute world said quote oh i've heard angela's talks i appreciate her enthusiasm it's like wow and that was after i had told her that she was part of the reason that musicians have the problems they do because she wouldn't accept what I was saying she wouldn't listen because she was older and I was younger yeah <laughs> and that was after that doesn't story. happen at all well it just made me live it I'm like you know yeah. what yeah. you're you're you have a voice that we could help a lot of people mm -hmm. and you're belittling yeah. me and it's really mm -hmm. sad you know, just because you don't understand and you don't yeah. want to let yourself understand right yeah and, and, and I got the other way too oh yeah and <laughs> Most of this stuff, there's always room to reach an understanding. Sure. It's just whether or not you're willing to work with the other person to reach the understanding. Very rarely are we literally trying to accomplish opposite things. Yeah, yeah. We're all usually trying to go in the same direction. Our language might sound like it's opposite, but <laughs> it, it almost never is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the number of times that I have heard the phrase anywhere on the internet, doesn't matter what you're talking about, well... What's the research behind that? You know what? Not everything has research. Musicians don't have a lot of research yet. If you're looking for a dissertation topic, please study this. We need this. Well, and it's hard, too, you because know? you look at what There's needs to be done. done in order to get things There's a huge approved. field in there. Yeah. You put everything in such a vacuum on some levels, which is helpful. Yeah. On the other hand, if we're saying this is our vacuum, but then you're not, and you're doing double blind. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So now we're doing double blind. Right. So now I don't know who's in the pool because somebody else is handling that. They don't know who's in the pool because it's anonymous, and we have no idea what is this person eating in a day. What are their sleep patterns what are, like? Yeah. You can't track yeah. that. No. Okay, so that's not giving us the whole story. Yeah. Because if your sleep is terrible and you can't recover, then... No, strength training is not necessarily <laughs> going to do you well. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. no. the, the, the studies that I've seen were, they were like targeted isometrics or targeted strength training based on a certain body part. So, yeah. I mean, they were, they were much more structured right. and localized. Right. And you have to narrow it down to get approved yeah. most of the time. But at the same time, does that say that, that all, all anecdotal evidence is useless? No, because just because something doesn't have research doesn't mean it's valid. Now, you can't draw every conclusion based on anything. No, but when you look at the number of years that the fitness community has been working on the same sort of stuff. Yeah. And all we're doing is applying the same principles to what we do in the same way that any other coach would apply it to their sport. Bingo. Bingo. Okay, so then do we invalidate literally the entire history of strength training, which has been going on for... Yeah, history, basically, like the second since so somebody like, picked up a rock that was too heavy, which is still going on in Scotland. <laughs> Scotland, yeah, <Fun. Yes. laughs> big rocks and Iceland. If you haven't seen that, oh yeah, oh yeah, all oh. of the Nordic countries and oh yeah, oh it's yeah. so cool. Yeah, Re but, really good documentary by Rove, on Full Sticker, oh, yeah? Full Strength, oh, just oh, about oh. the cultural mm -hmm. reasons for it. Right. You know, you and that one I think is the Icelandic, and they have that one's Icelandic. Too. And a vast one, but vast you know, oh, oh yeah, that one was super interesting. Um, but Sorry. yeah, so throughout <laughs> history, we've got well, nerd out about yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> throughout history, we've got this long tradition that is millions of hours, thousands of years of mm -hmm. data that we are working off of. Is it all correct? No. Sometimes it's hard to get the difference between causation and correlation. But all the stuff that Strongfit's currently going on about right now, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But it doesn't invalidate all of that. Just Nothing has to be perfect for it to still work or right. still be important or still be valid. Right. How many things do people say <laughs> in lessons that are completely untrue mm -hmm. that still get the desired results? How many methods books are there for our specific instruments that have verbal cues that are literally incorrect? Yeah but create the desired response. Exactly. I still use those. Yeah. I'll tell my students. This that's is what I'm doing. Don't, don't do that. I'll tell them, okay, I'm going to tell you this because it'll get you to do what I want you to do. That's not what's literally happening. <laughs> it's a whole body mapping thing. Like, this is not what you do. Right. But if I give you this image, they go, oh, oh. 
Yeah. And they do it. Yeah. All yeah, the we, time. We see that in, we see that in the gym too with clients and folks, you know, you can you can tell thirty people, hey, open up your hinge, move this way. Great. You have to tell somebody else, think of a squirrel and all of a sudden they're moving right. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing. It is you true. Know? And I'm 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 making up some actual right. sayings right there, obviously. But when you look at hinges, people can make them deceptively look good. Mm -hmm using their hip flexors, using their yep. glute max, glute med, under butt, if we will, top of the butt, if we will, inside of the butt, you know. <laughs> Actually, I don't think that's right. I think it's the, not the inguinal, no, the inguinal ligaments over here, my bad. Never mind. Never but, mind. you know, people, that one too. You do all sorts of weird things. Quads? Yeah. So, when you get down to it, it's like, okay, that same descriptor isn't necessarily, ah, that's, that's a total payment. I'm just yeah, like, off on. In any case, what we're saying is, <laughs> it drives both of us crazy how, yes. <laughs> how, but, but it, I feel like a lot of it tends to be fear and or ignorance driven. Absolutely. Because this is, performing arts medicine is still a relatively young it field. It's is. not in its infancy anymore, but it's right. still... People, I mean, it used to be, okay, so I'm on the committee, the Performance Health Committee, I'm the chair for the National Food Association. There's a guy, his name is Dr. Stephen Mitchell. Uh, he's hysterically funny, but he was actually the chair back in the day when it was called the Dysfunction Committee. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, literally, the Dysfunction Committee of the National Food Association. Okay, so I'm glad we've come a long way. <laughs> You know. We have a dentist, we have, an, we have a hand surgeon, we have uh, an ear, nose, throat doctor, mm -hmm. we have an OBGYN, we have people who have dealt with focal dystonia, oh, we have me, we have, uh, we have all kinds of people who have dealt with all right. different aspects right. of musicians' physical health, right. mental health, yeah. emotional health, and they all play together, but where's the research? Oh, so I'm so glad yeah. to see that there's... I mean that the the the, uh, the field is finally coming along. It's not so much in its infancy anymore, but I feel yeah. like the mentality and the struggle that I've had when I started this, mm -hmm. people would just look at me with pity. Yeah. Because they didn't understand. No. And that a lot of yeah. people have had bad experiences with personal trainers. Right. And that was me. So I am not at all. If you feel this yeah. way, I am not bashing you. Yeah. I get it. I thought for a long time that I was physically incapable of doing all sorts of things. Oh, like, sure. Okay, I'm just weak and I'm slow and I'm fat, but hey, I'm smart, so I'm gonna, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, change that internal was, dialogue, that, which is not a quick process. process. No, 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 and it took the right environment to do it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. know, that's a whole nother episode that's right there. That's a whole nother <laughs> episode. <laughs> but that's what we got started talking on the phone that first yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Like, man, that just drives me nuts. The, yeah. the whole mentality of, well, and like I said, the, the accordion player. Yeah. He's like, is that going to hurt my hands? Yeah. A valid fear. Probably based not. Based on what you experience most likely. Right. Um, I can't give him a, a solid answer for everything, but based no. on you just lifting weights, that's not going to generally cause problems with your forms. I used to wonder that all the time. So if mm -hmm. I work on grip strength, mm -hmm. will that alter my dexterity? Will I lose the quickness yes. in my fingers that I need uh -huh. and the flexibility? Because yeah. what if my yeah, forearms right. blow up and they get all right. super swollen and I can't right. move? And like that's not yeah. exactly how that works. Right. Or what if I do too many, you know, rows? Or um, nobody uh, does too many rows. Nobody does. Nobody does, does too many rows. Many rows. What if I do too many, you know, the uh, axle deads? Oh my god, I love axle deads. I don't know what an axle dead. Is. Oh, maybe axle I do. Bar, we're calling it different names. Axle bar deadlift. Axle bar is thick. Just a two, two and a half inch. It's like a hex bar. bar. No, uh, just a big round it's bar. It's just a huge. And so the idea like is a fat knot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yep. Fat bar would be. Fat so bar, axle bar, same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Yeah. Strongman implement. That was, is going to be bigger for your forearms then. For I rest. was afraid because I was like, oh my god, what if this blows up and I can't play because for sure. it's hurt. Valid Meanwhile, concern. this is what I felt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I needed that apparently. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I came back yeah. to the instrument, and I was like, I can support it better. Yeah. Who knew? You know. But we have. <laughs> Yeah, we have imbalances between oh, yeah. extensors and flexors. Major. And then, you know, like I said, the body does not work in isolation. Just yeah. because your bicep did a curl, right. your tricep has to stabilize, and then it will right. extend to release you to do the curl. Right. And but beyond that, you know, yeah. you have your delt and you have your rotator cuff. That's right. everything that's holding your shoulder yes. in the socket for you to do the right. bicep curl. You're not just isolating the bicep. Yeah. So when you have shoulder, it's more like keep that shoulder, when you have that's elbow not. pain, Mm -hmm. We have golfer's elbow. Any kind of epicondylitis is the big, the big term. 
But you know what? They got <laughs> media I know, I know, allowed to come out. Know, know. But but what? Yeah, these are the terms. They're these, good to hear. You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna hear, to hear right? Yeah. All these things insert here, and the, all that means we've got some overuse. We've probably got mm -hmm. some imbalance, whether it's from pronation and supination doing right. this business, mm -hmm. whether that's from doing flexing and extensing mm -hmm. too much, mm -hmm. whether it's from holding your instrument and not right. extending and doing enough extension. There's all. Maybe it's also from here. You're not. You're not going right backwards and extending. I do right. a lot of that. I do tricep extensions for almost everybody, whether they're this way. This way, musicians just don't. No. They can be in my stupid piccolo. Right. Right. <laughs> Poor right. bicep was like, right. I can't do anymore. No, no, and mine was always my forearm and yeah. then this part of the bicep here. You have to yeah. train but the whole area. Yeah, and you, can, you can see that in almost any CrossFit in any gym too. You have people that excel at the pulling movements, yeah. and people that excel at the pushing movements, mm -hmm. right. and. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we should have to ask that question, why are we so weak in this other thing? How is it that I can People deadlift don't want 500 to do what pounds, they suck but at. I can't do three push-ups? That's a big thing. People don't want to do what they suck at. you got to do what you suck at, whether it's yeah. <laughs> physically or in the practice room. And here's the thing that, again, in the practice room, too, I, I had this conversation <laughs> a lot this semester. I've got a lot of students who are doing a lot of amateur voicing internal mouth work, which is just... Well, fun. You want to crush your soul a little bit. That's how you do it, you know. <laughs> Sound amazing right now. Their improvement is phenomenal. I'm so, if you're watching this, I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> right. um, but it was that same conversation of you're going to sound bad. But on the other side of this is where you actually want to be. Yeah. And think about how that's going to feel if you take something that you couldn't do. And now you can you have just given yourself a new superpower. Yeah, you are so empowered when you can break. Through, whoops, when you can break through that. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It's like middle school star here for me. I failed the 13 minute mile test in middle middle school. I was never trained to run a mile. I was a sprinter. Like you want me to run 100 <laughs> just, meters, 200 meters? I can do that. Stupid arbitrary test. It was. So getting a sub 13 minute mile, I was like. Uh, do what? I'm like 30 getting some 13 minute mile <laughs> for the first time in my life. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm pulling but you're pretty doing high it. deadlift weights and I'm like, so I'm not weak. No, yeah. And I grew up thinking I was weak. And it's like, I now have proof that I'm not. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, you're not. that's why it's always worth it to go for something that you suck at. Yeah. in order to make yourself better. Now, yes. if it's something that you're like, I don't need this in my life, like, I'm not going to necessarily go, hey, I suck at archery, which has nothing to do with anything <laughs> I want to do with my life, and like, I'm going to go master archery because I can't. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you never know. You know. Zombie apocalypse, we don't have guns. Maybe. Right. You know. Right. You know. But, yeah, you got to but... shoot with both sides, though, right? So you don't get balanced. Uh, obviously. <laughs> That's the whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, archers. But, oh, gosh. But... You know, but for the things that you want to accomplish, if there's something that you can't do. If you do don't care well, about doing pull-ups, don't do pull-ups. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to do pull-up and you can't, work at doing pull-ups. Right. And, well, work on all the other things that help you the get better doing that help you, too. Like, progressions are not everything. No. Regressions. Again. There is a proper <laughs> progression and a regression for everything. Yeah. And if you don't have a trainer, or what, if you have a trainer, but if you don't have a trainer that knows how to properly regress you... <laughs> Uh, question them, and if they still can't do it, fire them and get another trainer. Yeah, I'm serious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's always a regression. That's a that's a huge yes. huge point you make that I I think goes completely understated is the regression. You yes. have to pull back sometimes and come back to this this origin point of where everything came from, mm -hmm. why it's dysfunctional, mm -hmm. why you're moving the way you are, and it is okay. It sometimes it absolutely sucks. There's no better term for it. Yes. But then when you finally get that thing moving, just like she was talking about with the work we actually did yesterday yeah. on a major injury that's, that's been with me my entire life, yeah. it's yeah. groundbreaking, earth-changing, and now you know I can do this, I can fix right. it, it's great, yeah. and it's not stupid to have the goal that I'm going to accomplish in five years. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, point in case, I have this client that um, I only see her for 30 minutes three times a week. 
So it's not a lot of time for us to do stuff, and she's got a bajillion things wrong with her, she will tell you. But one of her big things, she's got a, a plate in her wrist, so she can't Ooh. bend it, right? Okay. She's, she's, like, stuck. She can't put any weight on this arm. She's also highly overweight. She also has really tight issues, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Her big thing is, if she gets down on the floor, she can't get up off the floor except one way. We cannot progress her into, like, we're trying to progress her into doing, like, a lunge, a basic lunge mm -hmm. movement. But she right now only rolls up a certain way and then pushes herself off something to get off the floor. By the way, she's like 32, 35. She's not an older person. Yeah. So we're taking basic, there's a movement called the Turkish get up, right? Great exercise. So, and I use it on everybody. I mean, some part of it, because people look at it and go, well, putting it together yeah. the first time was sick. Yeah. <laughs> but you can take parts of it and show them the whole movement and be like, you're going to do this one day. No, I won't. Watch, we're going to do this one part, mm -hmm. so we'll do like a roll-up, we'll learn how to roll, and then we'll learn how to bridge. And then, so, what I'm doing with her now is we're trying to go from, like, I've got her in between, and we're, we have video, so I'll show you. She's like, I'm trying to do <laughs> this motion, yeah. which she, she still can't do it without having to hold on to something. But that's but improvement. Before she couldn't do it at all. Yeah. <laughs> so then, you know, so we're just breaking yeah. down a complex movement into other movements and the stuff that she couldn't do at all, we, re we regress and regress and regress and regress mm -hmm. until we hit something she can do, yes. and we build off of that. Right. And she's got so much more confidence yes. that translates into other areas of her life. Mm -hmm. Whether you're, you're a musician or not, I mean, right. you That's should always be able to do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, imagine That's how fun, actually. Imagine how good your performances get when you feel good about yourself, too. <laughs> <laughs> Confidence? What? I don't know. Like, huh. You know, we, I'm sure we could do a whole thing on performance anxiety. But we might want to wrap this up. <laughs> like, actually, we've had about a, just over an hour. Yeah. yeah, we should probably wrap this up. Hour six probably. minutes. Yeah. So. Well, darn. Because we could keep talking. Oh, we, I'm sure that... Uh, Probably after this, let's jot down some things for if we want to oh, do yeah. next time. <laughs> so. Guys, all it's right, been fun. Thanks for tuning in. Um, let's do some plugs, some handles, and all that. Oh, um, find us on the socials. Yeah, the social medias. Uh, all of them. <laughs> Mine is Music Strong or Music Strong Fitness on Instagram. Music Strong on Facebook. The Twitter is Flute Angel, but don't worry about that. I don't, really, I don't, I don't do the tweets so much. <laughs> and, I don't do uh, the tweets at all. So. Uh, <laughs> Good I need to. Um, YouTube is YouTube.com slash XYZ1234XY, you know, what it is. Yeah. Good luck finding it. They haven't made it easy, but I have a channel. <laughs> <laughs> and then my website is MusicStrong.com. Yeah. And, of course, mine is uh, TunedAndToneDPerformance.com. That's tuned with a D and toned with a D. Uh, that's a website. Uh, Instagram and Facebook, you can find me at TunedAndToneDPerformance. Um, and my YouTube channel, all you have to do is search Tune and Tone Performance. No, I've checked. Mine come up. Yeah, I have to get it verified and op optimize it. Um, we, we need to talk. That. But <laughs> <laughs> hopefully by the time this airs, that'll be optimized, and you can just search Music Strong on the YouTubes also. <laughs> I'm on the YouTubes. I upload a video to the YouTubes this week. So check it out. Um, if you've got any questions for next time, drop them in the comments. Uh, we can definitely address those. And we'll see you later.